Tony Winston here, Jazz Piano College. Uh, got a request from a viewer to cover uh, John Coltrane and um, uh, I want to say Monty Alexander, John Coltrane and McCoy Tyner on Afro Blue. Uh, just a quick word about my book reviews. This is the next one coming up. Very interesting book about uh, uh, women and computers. And I didn't mean to piss anybody off by my uh, other book reviews, um, so I'll keep them short. Anyway, let's get back to the song. So a good place to start is to think about the, the typical kind of McCoy Tyner chords here. We've got a, a chord built on fourths of F minor. Right, we call that F minor. And even the C is a fourth, because if you put it down here, you've got a C up to F. So it's all fourths. And check this out. There's a lot of what you call outside playing in this song, which is, you know, when you're like, say, on a particular chord, like F minor, and all of a sudden you go kind of into a scale that doesn't quite fit, and then bring it back into F minor. Okay, that's, that's called playing outside. Sometimes you can play outside for a lot longer. In this song, they go outside and very quickly bring it back. They really don't spend too much time uh, outside of the kitchen. They're in the kitchen most of the time, or a lot of the time. So start with these uh, fourth chords, and uh, I'll put them up there above me. And of course, down in the description, you can find some study guide for this song. some other stuff in there that you can do too. Now, this is not really my style of playing, as you probably know. I'm much more of an old school kind of guy. Um, but I really do appreciate this kind of playing. And I'll tell you a little bit later in the video why I like it and why I don't like it at the same time. What else can we talk about here? The rhythm. One, two, and three. 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 So that's the kind of the rhythm there. So the chords I hear him playing the most are these two this, sometimes going back and forth between these two. Oh, I, I should cover the song. So. Of course, the chart up there is wrong. Maybe Mongo, Santa Maria played it that way, but um, the way they play it is... It's like a G chord, and then a C chord. These are both altered dominants. You got a G with a 13 unaltered, but the flat nine. And it's this typical shape. It's kind of built on the diminished structure that can be used, you know, on, on dominant chords. So we've got G7, and then C sharp nine that flat 13 up there and then back to you know, kind of F minor, F suspended, whatever you want to do really. And then the funny part is, is when they get to the, the B section, it's just like church chords, you know, no sevenths or anything, just triads. Gleason sitting over there next to the piano smoking that pipe and everything. It's just so cringy. But, you know, at least there was somebody back in those days that was appreciating this music and, you know, preserving it for future use. <laughs> now, let me tell you a little bit why, why I like it and why I don't like it. The reason I don't, it's not that I don't like it, but I just find it lacking in emotional content. In other words, it just sounds like the same emotion constantly. 
and you know, I could be wrong. I just don't listen to it enough maybe to really get the uh, subtleties of it. But it just kind of sounds like the same emotion. Whereas if you're playing a song, Misty, right there, it's a very nice sound. And then we have some tension, and then it resolves again. And it's, we're still very pleasant. Now, it's kind of a darker minor chord. And then, ah, the light again. So to me, and uh, you know, I probably could have picked a better song, maybe something like by Burt Bacharach or something. Um, it's just that every new chord kind of brings kind of a, a new kind of emotional feeling. You know, you're happy, you're sad, you're pensive, you're, you a sense of longing, a sense of discovery. There's just so many little emotions that I think happen when you use, you know, more traditional harmony. And this... There is some, you know, content. You know, a little tension, and then it kind of relax back into there. Tension and resolve. So there is some there, but there's just not enough for me. Now, what I but why I think this music is super important is, you know, when you listen to a great pianist like Monty Alexander, he'll th it's just another kind of, uh, it's just another tone color that he can throw in. And, you know, he's playing a piece that, you know, maybe he's playing like a Frank Sinatra tune or something like that, but he finds a way to work some of that kind of stuff in. I know he, he loves to do that fourth thing, but he, you know, he'll throw some of this stuff in there but it's in the context of a, you know, kind of a typical song, you know. Or maybe, uh... you know, the modern stuff is in there, but it's used in a little bit more of a conventional way. And that's, that's what I like. But, hey, we all like different stuff. So what are some of the outside tricks that we can use? So going to the C altered, that's a C seventh, and using the F sharp, that's a tritone away from C. It's hard to even call that outside, but since the overall tonality is F, it sounds out. Now, another way to get out is to get really out. Just go a half step in one direction or the other. Instead of F pentatonic, F minor pentatonic. You know, go up here and go down here. Like I say, the chord doesn't necessarily have to support what the right hand is doing. All right, let's pick out one really cool riff from this song and we'll call it a day. You know, there's certainly, that's the riff I want to get, there's certainly uh, some blues in here too. I hear not only the F minor, but sometimes the B flat, so, you know, that's the blues, right? F goes to B flat in the blues, whether it's F minor or not, so. Just faking it, folks. Now here's the riff I really like. Yeah. Yeah, he goes up like uh It's something like that. I'm not going to figure it out. Now, another thing that I want to emphasize in all my videos for the next, I don't know, month or so, I'm going to emphasize this one point, and that is muscle memory 
and why it's so important. So I play a lot of classical music, so I have muscle memory of a lot of stuff. But even when I practice jazz, if I find something I like, I do it over and over and over again. So it becomes a part of me that I don't have to think about. And I think that will take a lot of the mystery out of jazz for people to realize that jazz musicians aren't thinking diminished scale, altered scale, I mean, they do when they're practicing and when they're working out ideas, but usually when you're soloing, uh, you know, if there's any thoughts like that, they go through your, your mind pretty quick. And most of it is just playing on instincts, stuff that you know. Now, I watched McCoy play, and he, you know, he, he leans into the piano, and he's, he's watching pretty intently what he's doing here in the middle, and he's keeping an eye on this because he never wants to miss this, right, like I just did. And, has muscle memory of that and he, he knows just how far that left hand needs to come down if he's up here it just goes like that <laughs> oops I'll get it watch this I'll get it I'll get it I looked that time didn't look that time I'm a little sloppy on this, like I say, it's not really my style of playing, uh, but I hope uh, my em explanations will help you approach this music and, uh, you know, incorporate it into your, into your style. I gotta say, mo there's not too much of, you don't really hear this style very much where you're hitting those, those bass notes like that, because if you do that, you're gonna get instantly compared to McCoy Tyner and who wants to be compared to McCoy Tyner? I certainly don't. But uh, if you're playing stride piano, you want to come down and hit bass notes. So it, it's a good thing to practice. That's all I can think of to talk about on this video. I do appreciate your support, especially over on Patreon and, and on PayPal and just, you know, the thumbs up and the comments. I'm a little behind on reading the comments, so I'm going to check them all out later today. 